So I saw a few comments on my last video saying that the title was misleading. Or even funnier, that my reading comprehension was completely borked. In response to the first comment, yes, the Steam Deck recovery image has been hanging around for months, but the assertion that it's nothing newsworthy is simply wrong. As Valve mentioned in the SteamOS 3.7.8 release notes, quote, updated the SteamOS recovery image for repairing SteamOS on the Steam Deck and the Legion Go S. If you would like to test SteamOS on your own AMD powered handheld, you can use this SteamOS recovery image and follow the instructions here. The fact is, it is very much newsworthy. Sure, there is absolutely no support for NVIDIA or Intel cards here, and in my estimation that's still a long way out, but it's still newsworthy. And in response to the second comment, Yes, again, I mean, in Valve's SteamOS recovery and installation guide, they do mention handheld specifically. The only devices officially supported on SteamOS right now are Steam Deck and Legion Go S. We are working on broadening support, and with the recent updates to Steam and SteamOS 3.7, compatibility with other AMD-powered PC handhelds has been improved. But all these AMD-powered PC handhelds are just that. They're PCs. If the support is there in the Steam Deck recovery image for other AMD-powered PC handhelds, then that means that there should be support for other AMD-powered PCs. So let's test it. In this video, I'm going to check to see if the SteamOS recovery image is ready to be installed on other AMD-powered PCs, and go a bit further than that. So I'm going to try to install SteamOS on the Legion Go S, the, the Windows variant, as well as some of the other PCs in my collection, including the Geekom A6, the Minis Forum HX100G, the Minis Forum AIX1 Pro, and the B-Link GTI 13 Ultra. Now, before we get into this, I have a blog over at GardnerBryant.com where I posted this video as an article, which if you like reading, you can go check that out. We're almost at a thousand subscribers over there and it is super fun and it's been super freeing and refreshing for me creatively uh, where I can just make content that I'm interested in making and there's a direct line of connection between you and me rather than having YouTube's algorithm mediate our relationship. Uh, if you're interested in that, you can head over to GardnerBryant.com. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is create the installation media. Since the vast, like vast majority of folks are going to be using Windows to create their installation media, I figured I would do the same. Plus, if you're already a Linux user, there's a very high chance that you already know how to do this on Linux. It's really simple, and I'm gonna make the same recommendations that Valve does on their official guide. On Windows, just download the required files. You need the SteamOS recovery image from the support article. I'm not linking directly to the file since it might be updated by the time you're seeing this. Uh, but you'll also need Rufus, which is the app that we're going to use to write the image to a USB stick. Now, for step two, you're going to need a USB stick with at least eight gigabytes of storage. Uh, and so I'm using this. This is a little Lexar uh, 128 gigabyte USB 3.2 uh, speed device. And the nice thing about it is it has a type A port, but it's also reversible and it has a type C port as well. Um, so you can uh, go ahead and just use this uh, on any device with a type C or a type A port. It's, it's freaking awesome. There's a link down below for that. All right, so to create your installation media, insert the USB device into your uh, computer. And if, you, if your thumb drive has any important data on it, make sure you back that up as this is going to wipe the entire device. Open Rufus and select the appropriate drive. Then go ahead and click the select button to choose the Steam Deck Repair 2025-0521.10-377 image.bz2 file. I don't know why I said that out loud, but whatever, that's the one we just downloaded. Now we're going to start writing the recovery media. Just select the start button here. Now that that's done, let's check out the first device. This is the Legion Go S, and the installation process uh, was actually really simple. I just plugged the installation media into the Legion Go S. Then, when the device is off, hold the power button and the volume up button until the light comes on. I was then presented with the boot menu, and I dropped into the BIOS settings so that I could disable secure boot. And this is a requirement for all the rest of these devices, so just keep that in mind. 
Once the Q-Boot was disabled, I shut the device off completely and then used the power and volume up buttons again to get back to the boot menu. From here, I selected my USB drive and then uh, let SteamOS boot itself up. I used the re-image device option on the desktop and let it do its magic. After just a few short moments, SteamOS was fully installed. One more reboot and a login to Steam, and I was playing games. One interesting thing to note is that the built-in gamepad of the Legion Go S did not work at all until the Steam client finished downloading. This was after the initial setup was complete. Another interesting technical issue is that the trackpad doesn't seem to work here at all, even after the initial setup. The touchscreen worked fine though, and that's how I was able to navigate the initial setup stuff. All right, next up, let's talk about the Geekom A6. So I reviewed this device a few months back and it was quite impressive. Installing SteamOS was very simple here as well. Uh, however, I'm not sure why, but it took several minutes to install versus the literal seconds it took on the Legion Go S. It has the Ryzen 7 6800H with a Radeon 680M GPU and 32 gigabytes of RAM. Doom the Dark Ages was a bit all over the place on here, but uh, otherwise most games just seemed to work. One thing that I've noticed though is that Bluetooth did not seem to work on the Geekom A6 until I downloaded the available SteamOS update that was reported. But after the update, everything seemed to work just fine. I did notice that some games refused to start installation for some reason, and I, I couldn't suss out a rhyme or reason for it. Although after the update, that seemed to have subsided. Next up was the Minis Forum HX100G. Now this thing is one of my favorite gaming devices. It's, I don't know, I just love this thing. I've had it set up as part of my official gaming setup in the office here for months, and it's incredible. So this PC has an AMD Ryzen 7 7840HZ with Radeon 780M graphics. The CPU is clocked at 5.14 gigahertz with eight cores and 16 threads, and there's 32 gigabytes of RAM. All in all, it's a very neat package, and guess what? SteamOS runs like an absolute dream on this thing. And no, it's not a handheld device, but it is pretty close. It's a pre-built with an AMD APU, and it all just works. Now, I'm really surprised to see that Doom the Dark Ages runs at a rock solid 60 FPS on low settings at 720p. Uh, I was expecting it to run closer to what the Steam Deck is capable of, but this thing is not power limited in any way. So uh, I could probably turn the graphics up to medium and it would still work pretty well. And you might ask, why am I running it at 720p? Well, that's because I'm playing it on my CRT and it looks phenomenal on this thing. It looks so good and I cannot capture it with any of the cameras that I have at my disposal uh, because that just isn't the way CRTs work. But it looks so good on here. I don't think I need to turn it up to medium graphics. It just looks great. My, my understanding here is that this is like two-ish generations ahead of the Steam Deck's hardware. So let's try this on something even newer. The Minis Forum AIX1. Now, this is where things stop being easy. And sadly, the SteamOS recovery image will not boot on this thing no matter what I have tried. I struggled to get the uh, SteamOS installer image to even boot itself, let alone start the installation process. All it does here is just hang on the UEFI screen. It won't progress past this. But then I had an idea. What if I transplanted the SSD from the Geekom A6 into this thing? SteamOS was already installed on that drive and it even had all the games ready to go, so I tried it. Unfortunately though, no dice. Uh, I, no matter what I did, I could not get this to work. If you have any ideas on how I can troubleshoot this, because I really don't even know where to start troubleshooting this, let me know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, why not like that smash button? It's the best way to tell YouTube you wanna see more videos just like this, if I get enough comments and likes on this, uh, I'll try running this on my old uh, 2019 Thalio from System76. That should be fun. All right, now we come to the device that I was most excited to try, the B-Link GTI 13 Ultra. This has an Intel Core i9-13900HK, 14 cores up to 5.4 gigahertz with 32 gigabytes of RAM. And you might be saying, well, that's not an AMD based device, dude. And that's very astute of you, but I am hoping that pairing the GTI with the companion docking station 
and a discrete Radeon RX 6600 XT might just let me install SteamOS on this thing. And I know that the 6600 XT is a little bit dated, but it is the newest Radeon card I have on hand. Unfortunately, after much tinkering and futzing about, I could not get the Steam Deck recovery image to boot. It doesn't even get to the boot up process of the installation media, which is quite unfortunate. I also tried the same trick of dropping the SSD from the Geekcom in here, and it did exactly nothing. And that's unfortunate. And you know what? I have more PCs kicking around. Most of them run the uh, Ryzen 7 5000, 6000, or 7000 series APUs, while the others are all Intel. I feel like I can quite confidently predict how each of these are going to work or won't work based on my testing already. So we're three out of five for the testing here, and I was truly hoping that I'd get more mileage out of the new SteamOS recovery image, but I also can't be too surprised when Valve says other AMD powered PCs. Alas, it's not ready for primetime quite yet, but you know what? I hope that Valve gets a move on with broader hardware support since honestly, Windows 10's end of life is looming large for many of us PC gamers, and that would be a perfect opportunity for Valve to grow the Linux gaming market share. I'd love to know your thoughts on any of my testing here, what you think I might be able to do to get some of these other pieces of hardware working with SteamOS, Share your thoughts down in the comments below. You can also head over to the forum, forum.heavyelement.com, or you can head over to the blog, garnerbryant.com, to let me know your thoughts on this. I want to thank my patrons, my YouTube members, and my blog subscribers for their continued support here. It's because of these folks that you're seeing over here that I'm able to continue making videos like this uh, and experimenting and having fun. If you enjoy the work that I'm doing, you can get your name listed over here by supporting the show. Uh, there's going to be links down below. And with that said, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.